In this video, we are going to build on our trigonometric definitions. In the previous grade, you would have learned about a Cartesian plane, and you would have learned about the x-axis and the y-axis, and also the origin. That's the position where the x and y values cross. If I draw a triangle on the Cartesian plane, the following information can be found in the triangle. If I want to find the length of this line, the horizontal line, I will read a value on the x-axis. And if I want to find the length of the vertical line, I'll read the value from the y-axis. I can also find the length of the hypotenuse line by using Pythagoras, meaning x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. Also on a Cartesian plane, we can apply the trigonometric definitions. Let us say the angle theta is the angle at the origin. Then x would be adjacent to theta. y would be opposite of theta. And r would be the hypotenuse because it is opposite the right angle of the triangle. That means we can find the ratios for sine, cosine, and tan in that triangle. For sine we have the definition opposite over hypotenuse. So sine would be y over r. For cosine we have adjacent over hypotenuse. So x over r. And for tan we would have opposite over adjacent y over x. So the way we name angles, we start on the x-axis, this will be called 0 degrees. And if I rotate from the x-axis towards the y-axis, I would have gone a full 90 degrees. And then from the y-axis back to the x-axis, is another 90, so that means 180 degrees. And then from 180 to the y axis again, I rotate another 90 degrees, so that will be 270. And then from the y axis in this position back to zero, a full 360 degrees. So I can rotate a full rotation right around uh, from 0 to 90, 90 to 180, 180 to 270, and 270 to 360. And I can name each quadrant. This is called quadrant 1, and it represents the values between 90 degrees and 0 degrees. This is called quadrant 2. And it represents the values from 90 degrees up until 180 degrees. Then this is called quadrant 3. And it represents the angle size between 180 and 270 degrees. And the last one is called quadrant 4. And it represents the values from 270 degrees up until 360 degrees. So what we have learned now is that this, this is called quadrant 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
and in each quadrant there are specific properties for every trigonometric definition. In the first quadrant, all three definitions have positive values. So if I put in my calculator any value between 0 and 90 degrees for sine, cosine, and tan, any value between 0 and 90 would produce a positive answer. In the second quadrant, I only have sine as positive. That means if I put any value between 90 and 180 degrees into my calculator for sine, it will produce a positive answer. But for cos and tan, it will give us a negative answer. In quadrant 3, only tan would be positive. So any value between 180 and 270 next to tan would produce a positive value. And sine and cosine between 180 and 270 degrees will give us negative values. And in quadrant 4, only cosine would be positive. That means any value for theta between 270 degrees and 360 degrees substituted into cos theta will give us a positive answer. But for sine and tan, it will give us negative answers. And this is what we call a cost diagram. You can also use an acronym to remember this. So we have an A for all, an S for sine, a T for tan, and a C for cos. And you can say all stations. to Cape Town. So that's an easy way to remember uh, the position in which they are going from quadrant 1 to quadrant 4. When we get to trigonometric graphs, you are going to see why these properties are true for each of these quadrants.